Welcome back. So in this second part of the technical video series of our new infrared sensor for motion and presence detection, I'll walk you through the quick steps that you can take to evaluate this sensor with our visualization tool called Unico GUI. So let us take a look at all the hardwares that are required for this evaluation. Here I have the Profimems motherboard. On top of that, I have the DIL24 adapter board. Then I have the infrared sensor evaluation kit which comes with a flex cable and I also have a micro USB cable. Now you can see that I have attached my sensor through a flex cable to the Profimems board and the micro USB goes to the PC. So now that we have our hardware connected to the PC, let us go ahead and download the latest version of the Unico GUI from SD's website. In order to do that, you can look for Unico GUI And once you land on the Unico GUI page, you can click on Get Software. And since Unico GUI is a cross-platform visualization tool, you can download it for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux operating systems. Since I'm using a Windows operating system, I would click on the third link here. Now that you have downloaded and installed the Unico GUI software, let me walk you through the quick steps you can take to evaluate the IR sensor for your motion and presence detection applications. Once you first open Unico, you will see this list where all ST's MEMS product are enlisted. Now let us look for the part number for the IR sensor that we are evaluating today, which is STHS34PF80. Once you click on select device, you will be taken into this landing page where you can see the USB port that the Profi MEMS board is connected to and also the respective version of the firmware and software. Now let us move on to the options tab. In the options tab, you can see there is an easy configuration button that you can utilize to configure the sensor to a predefined default value. You can change this configuration as you require based on your applications. And to know more on how to choose these parameters and how they impact the output, please refer to the datasheet and the application note for this part. Now let's move on to the registers and the embedded registers part. Unico allows you to both read and write on any of the available registers that are embedded on the sensor. One thing to note here is there are two different memory banks. One is the main memory bank. The other one is the embedded register memory bank. On the embedded register memory bank, you will be able to change parameters like the threshold for presence and motion, or the ambient shock, or the hysteresis for motion or presence, and so on. Unico also allows you to save any of the logs that you have taken during your evolution process. It also allows you to put save and load any of the configuration that you might be interested to use for a later test. Let us now start the data streaming for the sensor and take a look at the plot. The first app shows the raw data output of the sensor. The signal in red shows the deambient or the temperature at the package of the sensor. The signal in green shows the object or the heat radiation that the sensor sees inside its field of view. Here in the red, you can observe the presence signal. In the purple, the T-motion signal. In the green, the ambient shock signal. The yellow signal below shows corresponding flag output from the smart embedded algorithms that are running locally on the sensor. As a quick demonstration of the embedded algorithm outputs, I will now hover my hand twice above the sensor, followed by keeping it still for a few seconds. As you can see, as I hover my hand, both the presence and motion flag are set high. Now that I'm keeping my hand still above the sensor, you can observe that 
although the motion flag goes down, the presence flag is still set high. Now that I move my hand away, the presence flag goes down. You can also utilize Unicode GUI to change configurations of the smart embedded algorithms in real time, such as the hysteresis or the threshold or even the low pass filter settings. If you still require to change configurations and simulate corresponding output after you have taken a log, you can use the offline tuning tool. That's it for this video. Thank you.